Jupiter will be uh, in opposition and that's when it will go retrograde if I set it up correctly. So it's pretty well stationary now. There it goes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to request it to give you an amplifier for your voice. So if you want to really? hold the mic up to your mouth. Saturn will have only a short retrograde episode when it goes. There it goes. Um, and if I crank far enough, the sun will get... Here's, Mer here's Mars, which has a bigger retrograde episode. There it, there it, there it goes. All right? So, if you put the mic closer to your mouth, it'll help you. Well, I don't know how to wear this thing. I, well, I can't. Uh, okay. That's, that's good. It's very annoying to my ear, that's the problem. Um, I've got somebody talking in my right ear. It's very strange. Okay, now, uh, now we'll, ta we'll take it apart. Um, the, uh, now, what's in here is... That's the, the gadget that does the... Uh, phase of the moon. You simply have two wheels with equal numbers of equal numbers of teeth. One on the sun pointer, one on the moon pointer. So, uh, one one turn of the one relative to the other means one turn of the moon. So, uh, if I that's showing new moon when the, the so two are the together. Little, the little ball in there represents day and night, or represents the no? Day it day represents day. the phase of the moon. The phase of the moon. So that's that. Um, when it's like this, that's full moon. When it's like that, it's new moon. Okay. So that's uh, and the wreck of that survives. So we're sure about that. that. Uh, now we're into my conjectural planet pointers. I've done done the pointers on my new model slightly differently, mechanically rather better, and actually more closely based on precedents I find in the um, wreck of the original You can assemble part. it blindfolded, huh? Assemble you, we could try that. These are all coaxial shafts then going down to... I didn't hear They're all coaxial shafts going down to... Yes. So uh, th it's a, a co set of coaxial nested shafts. I've made them quite narrow in this model. In the other model I've made them quite big with polygonal seats. You, mm. you may have seen, if you go yes, and look at that, that video, video again, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which is a much better arrangement. So that's, that is, that is Saturn. According these, to me. All these are Saturn. This is Jupiter. Um, before I strip uh, Mars out. I'll just, you, it, this makes it very clear what's going on. Uh, if I tilt it up, more of you can see it. Is that all right for you? Oh, yes. Now, it, I'm going backwards in time. It's when the pin is at the inside like this that you get the retrograde episode. Like that. You see? That's going backwards in time. So let's go forward again. You'll see it again. And that's merely connected through to the pointer. Mm -hmm. How do they coordinate the time of day to the overall? You know? I mean, did they every day they moved it a certain distance in order to know what is today, where every star and every planet uh, is located, we did, or how did they use it? We don't know how it was used because we don't have any book of instructions. <laughs> um, but uh, that, so that's Mar uh, Mar uh, Mars. Ma Mars. Jupiter and Saturn are all working the same trick with just different numbers of gear teeth and a, in each and a different relationship between the size of the epi the radius of the epicycle pin to the radius of its center from the, the center of the dial uh, which is related to the actual size of the orbits in the sky um, so this is what we end up with at that level and we're getting down almost to the level of what survives um, if you squint in here, you can see at the back, near the frame plate, a large wheel, which I'm getting my fingernail onto there, uh, just about a quarter of an inch in front of the dial. That, that's the big wheel you see in the original fragment. So almost everything in front of that, is uh, until you get to the dial plate itself, is conjectural. I say almost, because there are some bits and pieces sticking out of that big wheel. 
uh, as a basis for reconstruction, but not much. Now I'm going to turn it over and strip the back tile off. Um, this gets amusing. You need key? <laughs> I need no, I need thumbnails. If anything, my wheels are slightly thicker than those in the original. Um, the appearance of thickness in some cases is due to um, co corrosion products and marine accretions stuck on the, on, 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 on the what's left of the metal. Um, and in other cases, simply uh, um, your, a shadow makes the, gives you a false impression. So you have a pin that you can then take out to flip it up, is that...? Excuse me? So when you have to reset the cycles, that you just... Um, if you, you... Yes, exactly. I, you see, I'm... I, but I'm, I now know for certain that my reconstruction here is wrong, but the, the alternative that's been published, I'm not convinced is right, so I haven't altered it yet. Now, have I got the... Um, here's where I may need a, a pusher, because these buttons have got a bit stiff. So... There, there, there it is. Um, that, that's the, the back tar. We have only less than half of it all together in a, lot of, in a number of fragments, but all, and all from this side of the dial. So if I move this, you, you, you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, so we've got chunks of this side of the dial, and the, the left side is, uh, is, is completely missing of the original, but we have enough to be uh, pretty sure of what we're doing, except as I mentioned in my talk, this 76 year cycle is, is a conjectural addition. Uh, the inscription says there the, the was one, so that's where I put it. Um, and it's very simple to gear it through to this spindle. Um, the, uh, the, the so called spirals, they aren't spirals at all, uh, they, they are sets of semicircles. Um, what you saw on more or less the last slide before lunch uh, showed the correct equations for them, if you want to do it by equations. Uh, that's not how I set them out. I simply set them out with compasses. Um, uh, but it also said they're Archimedean spirals, and with respect, they're not. Um, they share some properties with Archimedean spirals, but they're, they're geometrically distinct. The so that's... instrument was semicircles too? Yes. Yes. According to my measurements, and uh, somebody else has, in effect, redone my measurements and got a doctor at doing it, uh, and uh, she agrees with me. How many years did you spend in, uh, studying this and being able... Far too many. How many? <laughs> um, I started getting interest, really interested in the mid-1980s. I first went to Athens, I think, in the winter of 1990 to 91, and uh, some, uh, several years running, uh, spent a month or so in Athens, in the in in typically in the winter, the rainy season, it got very wet indeed, um, and and learn, learned two Greek expressions for heart, for heavy rain, uh, yeah. but the only thing I did learn, um, and uh, that's when I took all my measurements and photographs and radiographs. Speak Greek too, a little, un poco, uh, legal. <laughs> yes. So let's look in the box itself. Um, so here is the gearing that you saw on the slide to the back dial. This is all... Uh, if we ignore what's mounted on here, um, this is all perfectly straightforward gearing, driving the pointers on the back dials. Um, but um, we have to look at what's happening here, because this is interesting. thumbnail job. My first iteration of this reconstruction, I got this slightly wrong, but it's, it's right now. Did you have mechanical engineers helping you? Or? Pardon? Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm just an amateur mechanic and I did it myself. I have a workshop at the end of the garden. Uh, what you'd call the end of the yard, I think. Um, so, 
here we are. Um, the this wheel, which is driven directly from the, the this gear on the hand knob, goes round one turn to a year. Um, then there's some other gearing which is a bit difficult to expose to show you, so I'm, uh, we, ha we have to finish today. So um, I'm not going to take it any further apart, if you'll excuse me. But under there is um, another couple of gear pairs, which then go through to this big one at the back. I put up a, a period relation on the screen, which I didn't then explain very far. Uh, in 19 years, there are 254 tro tropical months. Now the moon pointer on the front is showing the tropical month, in other words the motion of the moon with respect to the solstices and equinoxes on the dial. Um, so we have to have that 19 to 254 ratio. The designer's done it, he's built the 19 in by having a wheel of twice that number, a 38 toothed wheel, which is hidden underneath here. And the 254 is 2 times 127, and 127 is prime, so we've got a 127 wheel here, this large one. So this is, this is the motion coming through from the front to drive the moon pointer, and when it's driven that wheel, that's going at the, the average rate of rotation for the moon pointer. At a steady rate, if I could turn the knob at a steady rate. So, now we have this wheel on top. There, there, there is that, that, that square on the wheel that goes round at the mean rate for the moon. <coughs> What's the size for the variation of the moon? Well, in modern terms, it's to do with the fact the moon's orbit is elliptical, okay. significantly elliptical. Uh, uh, but if you like, it, the ancient theory approximates it to um, a, an offset circular motion, offset in a direction that is moving slightly in space. Oh. Um, and, it, and it's enough elliptical for them to know this. Not for them to know that it was elliptical, but the, the unevenness is enough for anybody watching the sky without instruments to be able to appreciate it. You simply have to uh, see how far is it from the fixed stars one night and, then, and how far the next night. So you can see what angle it's moved through. Uh, and you can find the, the variation is enough to be fairly easily appreciated. Okay. Even if you didn't have a clock? You don't need a clock, you just need to look at it night by night. Okay. At the same time. From, from the same spot, in principle, at the same, same time, same, yes. Same but in, in, from you, the same spot, the same angle. Well, like the, the, you stay in the same. Must be stationary, right? Uh, well, the the observer is in one place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't suppose in the first century BC observer or second uh, second century when Hipparchos was observing, and mm -hmm. Hipparchos is the first person we know who actually did a, a mathematical treatment of the lunar anomaly because it's his treatment that the num his numbers go through into Ptolemy's Almagest. Mm. Um, so that's tropical and the back is synodic, is that right? Uh, it's, it's the motion of the moon pointer on the front is the tropical month uh, because it's measuring, if you like, in relation to the zodiac. Um, but the, um, I would say quite distinctly it's tropical as opposed to sidereal but because they were becoming aware of the difference but um, you can still see the synodic month on the front this relative motion of the moon and sun pointers is again the synodic month um, so what else? it's the the mathematical model that corres it corresponds to is is very similar to that of Hipparchus but the parameters are not the same so, uh, people have tried to hang this thing on Hipparchus. It won't do. People have also tried to hang it on Archimedes, and with respect, that won't do either. Archimedes is too early. In, in the time of Archimedes, the lunar anomaly wasn't appreciated. Um, so, you've got this, this wheel going round at a steady average moon speed, and so it earns... Where, where, where can we go? That, that one, same number of teeth, so that's going round at the mean speed, it's when you put this one on top, turning about a different centre, that you start to get that uh, uneven motion. At this point, where the pin is at the outside of the slot, it's going slowest, 
at this point where the pin's at the inside of the slot, it's going fastest. And as you see, the fastest point, the slowest point, are moving slowly round in the box and therefore, in effect, on the dial at the front. So that's that offset circle at the top? That's, yes, that's okay. the, um, so that, that's the lunar, oh, and to feed it back to the front, we, we put a, a, another equal wheel on here, so that's going with the unequal motion. Then if I take these back off, that wheel there is through another pair of equal wheels driving the moon spindle at the front. The moon pointer goes on here. Okay? There is not a single differential gear. Uh, it's not a differential gear in the sense that Derek Price thought. Um, there, there is a differential motion going on, but it's not what we... If, to, to, uh, borrow somebody else's phrase, it's a differential gear, but not as we know it. Yeah? Can um, we say that the Greek really laid down the, uh, the fundamentals of clock today? The gears are the same, the, the whole overall concept is the same. Um, I would be a little uneasy with that without careful qualification. Um, well, they did the astronomy here with the same measurement of time. Mm. You don't have a clock unless you have some way of making it go at a steady speed. Now, in, a, in, in the ancient world, they had water clocks, which yeah. did go at a sort of steady speed, but not very hard to regulate a water clock properly. I mean, after all, consider this. Consider how the rate of flow through an orifice changes with temperature, with the varying viscosity of the water. Um, so, pardon me? Well, they had means for keeping the head constant. That's not difficult to arrange. I mean, one way of doing it is rather like the way, ladies, excuse me, that you'll find in a men's lavatory for the automatic flushing. <laughs> um, it's done rather the same way. Uh, but um, the, uh, there's another way which involves a float valve lifted, uh, lifted by the water level, so that it restricts the intake. But, um, and both these seem to have existed in the ancient world. But the real problem is you, uh, the, 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 the flow of the water through the regulating orifice. Mm 